Hey folks, what's up, E.T.? So I got a piece of Buffalo River here, and I got a mess of cords here. And uh, this was an end cut. It's got some chunks out of it, and uh, we're just gonna see if we can get it into a biface. Best we can. This is one of the new boppers um, after the new epoxy. Some of you know I had a bad batch of epoxy which was causing me all kinds of trouble. And uh, I pulled them off the, pulled them down, stopped selling them until I got it sorted out. And I have beat some serious heavy stuff with this. And uh, so far, so good. Still not quite ready to call it good, but getting closer. A lot of you've been asking, so probably beat on stuff for another week or so, and if everything holds up, I've been using the other big boppers too. I mean, I've been spalling some pretty big stuff with that thing, and it's still on there. So all positive signs. And all we're doing here is we're just zigzagging this thing off. I know it's been a while since I've made any videos. Um, if you watch all my videos, then you probably know that I just been playing around with some fog napping. I haven't been filming all that, but uh, I'm going to film some more of it. I, I did just, um, I, if you're watching this, I've probably already released the other video where I made a pickwick fog napping and uh, wasn't sure I was ready to make a video yet because I'm just practicing but uh, it turned out okay and I made a harden um, which was pretty cool too I did not film the harden this fat end off here before something catastrophic happens. When you got this much weight hanging off one end, then you have a potential for snapping the piece. I've napped a couple percussion pieces. I really got out of practice. I, for the most part, I haven't done a whole lot of napping for the last over a month. A little bit here and there, but very little. My rock shop time turned into feeling orders time, so it didn't leave a lot of time for napping. Currently caught up in the leather shop. So, I actually have nothing in mind to nap here.
starting to get fairly thin. Got a ridge coming in right here. Let's Actually, it went in there and it hit that junk right there and stopped. Y'all can see that, I'm guessing, right there. Hopefully we can get under that. Now, I hit from the bottom, but you see how I'm holding this here? Which, at this thickness, does make it safer because I'm bracing this in. So I'm holding the sides and I'm holding the end, so my hand's taking a lot of that shock. Part of the key of one of the biggest keys and not breaking things, which don't get me wrong, I break stuff all the time. Sometimes I break multiples in a row, <laughs> still to this day. That is one of the nice things about fog napping is uh, there is zero stress for me in fog napping. I still got a long ways to go on my fog napping. I'm not anywhere even close to remotely close to the level that Robert's at. You know, looking for a course of radar. Here we go. But I've only actually done, oh, I don't know, half a dozen or so, maybe a couple more fog points um, since my time with Robert. Whatever it is, I posted all over Facebook yesterday. I don't remember how many points it was. It wasn't a bunch. Yesterday was the first time I got the map since I got back from there. I think that's kind of going there and stopped. It did, of course. So I made a big mess for myself. That's all right, we'll get rid of it. That's a serious hand Joe, ain't it? I knew that was gonna do that and I did it anyways. I'm not exactly sure why, but I did. Well, let's see. I may be able to pop, pop part of it out. It's got two bad spots right there in it. I don't go through the other side, but I don't know about getting it too thin. Um, we'll see. Take a couple of indirect strikes here and Regularize it. If you haven't tried indirect, you really should try it. And I'll tell you what, I am absolutely loving these lights that I picked up. 
I've been in denial for a while on my eyesight, I guess. Trying to just do with what I had and, and uh, wasn't working out for me anymore. It's having a hard time napping anything. I got me some new lights. I got me some stronger readers for when I'm finishing my edges and stuff. And uh, it's already made a pretty big difference. I think. Doesn't mean I'm not still going to mess points up. Do dumb stuff like when I threw that hinge in there, you know. Knock this big old hunk off right here. There we go. Stuff right there is a little bit of a problem. In case you're wondering, this is a number four flexi stick. not familiar with the flexi sticks they're my own my own thing there that I come up with makes a pretty good booger picker too Doesn't want to release, don't keep hitting it. Well, we're relatively, relatively thin. All right, let's regularize it. Other than getting orders out, I pretty much uh, haven't done a lot. I've done some cutting in the shop, but not a lot. Um, just been kind of concentrating on doing a little napping. Like I said, it's it's been quite a while since I've got to really do a lot. And I lost my hand pad, of course. Hold on, let me go find my hand pad. All right, so I have been really, really enjoying the uh, fog napping, and uh, it's pretty easy to get to get them to come out. I mean, even at my fog napping uh, level, is pretty easy to get them to turn out looking pretty nice you know so you get that satisfaction of making a point right away I can see the appeal to it I'm not giving up percussion but I can definitely see why people like like doing it it's enjoyable just relaxing I guess You would think this would be too, but for whatever reason are a little more stress for me and involved in the percussion side. Okay. 
got to round the one up. May just make this a leaf shaped blade of some sort or another. Not sure. It could turn into an almond between now and then, I guess. That pressure flake ran all the way into there. That's pretty good ways. I wouldn't be surprised about that at all on obsidian, but pretty cool they're running in that far on this Buffalo River. Cause that's that's an inch and a half probably I bet it close to it. How far was that? I blew away a part of it, but yeah, it was every it was right about an inch and a half. It may actually been just a hair more, but pretty incredible. get a flake to come in right here you kind of see that path right there see if we can throw one in there or not Do you guys see that I, right there just gonna see if I can throw one in there oh it released but it still went in there though See, it looks like there's a ridge going in there, but there's an interruption in it right there. So, right now, currently, the way it's set up, that probably wouldn't run in there. Just go in there and hinge right there. We'll come back, we'll get that cleaned off. Sometimes you can use your abrader. knock that down some make it easier to get in there to it when we get around to that again Too terrible. and shoot one up from the bottom and clean that up a little bit.
pressure flakes in on this other side. So it's been so hot, I haven't, I haven't really been wanting to run the kiln because it does heat it up in here. Like uh, when it's this hot, it's uncomfortable. Um, I don't know how many BTUs of cooling I would need to make up for that, but quite a bit. <laughs> But I do need to get some rock heated. actually kind of warm in here now I'm starting to sweat <laughs> that's one thing you don't get very worked up or don't have to work very hard when you're doing uh it's less physical I guess this would be the thing when you're doing uh fog napping trying to get underneath it and I did all right let's take a couple more indirect strikes go to a number three
Yeah, heck, I'm sweating now. We're thin enough at this point that if it didn't get any thinner, it would be fine. How thin is it? Well, it's thin enough. We still may end up taking some flakes, but... That's a little heavy flaking for this little hand flaker, but it's working. I get back in the habit of looking at the monitor. I was down at Robert's napping, and uh, first day we were playing around with fog, and then we had reserved the second day for uh, percussion, and I couldn't percussion that in nothing. I got a thousand excuses as to why, but I could not percussion nap anything, and it was 110 degrees. The first day it didn't seem that bad, but we were just fog napping. Like I said, it's not real, it's less physical, I guess. And uh, <coughs> second day, I was sweating bullets. It was 110. And I couldn't nap a point to save my life. I felt kind of bad because I was supposed to be there to help Robert with his percussion. And he's there, which honestly, Robert is, uh, he has all the fundamentals. He has everything that he needs to become what I'm sure will be a great percussion napper, the same as he is fog napper. Just uh, has to break enough rock to get to where he wants to be, is all there is to it. 
but he has all the fundamentals. He knows he knows exactly what the deal is and all that stuff. So, but I was supposed to be helping him with that, and I just fell apart that second day. I just hot. I couldn't see him. Just couldn't nap me anything. I mean nothing. So I felt kind of bad because he helped me out a lot with my showed me a bunch of stuff on fog napping. And I don't feel like I reciprocated on the percussion, but hopefully I can make up for that at some point. Take a flake in there, clean that up. Got it. This side's a bit crunchy, so it's a point shrinking, but I'm all right with that, I guess. I'm not sure that I'll get it all off. Probably isn't going to run all the way across there either. It's got this crunchy stuff right here, and it's got this crunchy stuff right here, and it's caused me some difficulty on this side. See if we can pop this off.
so he let's clean this edge up let's put my other glasses on well I gotta find the other glasses I want Okay, so heck, we're already up to 38 minutes. That sure didn't seem that long, but... Apparently it was. Seems like I can never make a point in less than about an hour. Fog napping, I can. Um, even, even with the grinding. And there is going to be some fog napping on this channel. Um, focus is still going to be percussion, but uh, I'll start a fog playlist. And if you guys want to watch that, then you can watch it. If not, then save it for the percussion. I know some percussion guys are adamantly opposed to fog napping. They just some of them don't care either way. They just it's not for them. They won't they won't do it. They just want to break rock, which is the most fun. But some of those materials, well, a lot of the materials now are just so expensive that it just makes sense to be doing fog. Hopefully all that noise in here isn't isn't too much on the video. My wife's vibratory tumbler is going over there. Two fans going. I don't have the saw running right now, but
this piece had some crunchy stuff in it. Every stone is going to have a unique challenge that you have to deal with. It is so, so uh, rare for me to get a piece that just has nothing you got to deal with. Love these flakers. Absolutely love them. Robert, you guys know that these come with uh, they come with another bit. Um, so they come with a welding rod like this. And Robert made me this for notching and uh, I just uh, sharpened the one I had up that's like this and uh, worked great just like the one Robert gave me um, so if you get one of these it comes with the copper bit comes with the metal bit you can just file that flat like that and use use it as a notching tool that way or Use it rounded or however however it is you want to use it. Yeah, so I'm still trying to get back into napping mode here. You guys are probably thinking, what are you talking about? You nap all the time. <laughs> it might seem like it, but I, I don't. Or at least not as much as I was, anyhow. Back when I used to shoot a lot of archery, so I owned a construction company, and we did a lot of work out of town. And uh, I'd go there, and I'd at one point we had you know, like 30 employees working for us. And uh, I'd go to these towns. I'd have to go there ahead of things and rent houses and apartments and whatever it was we were renting to house the guys in. And uh, I always stayed with my guys. I didn't. Get a separate house or any of that stuff. I know a lot of guys do that. Um, I liked most of my guys. <laughs> that never made any sense but, uh, to me. But some people like to leave that separation, but that just wasn't me. Um, 
that did make it harder sometimes when there was cause to get rid of someone you had to get rid of someone that you really considered a friend you know but uh, was what it was but anyways um, When I'd go look at a house, part of the criteria was is it rained a lot in Alaska, of course, or snowed, or depending on the time of year, you know. So I'd rent a house that usually so that I could shoot from a back bedroom, through the bedroom, down the hallway, through the living room, and preferably into another room. <laughs> and uh, until then on bad days, I could still shoot my bow. And uh, a lot of the guys shot too, so we all shot in the house, and uh, we were we were relatively safe about it. <laughs> as much as a bunch of yahoos and a uh, basically a more or less a bachelor pad um, could, anyways. No one got killed. Can't say there wasn't some near near misses, but. <laughs> Anyways, um, <coughs> so I always looked to rent a place like that, and I shot probably 200 arrows or better every day, every single day. I had nothing else to do. My kids weren't there. My wife wasn't there. Just work and fish and shoot bows and stuff like that. So, uh, Anyways, so I'd shoot indoors, so I got to where I was shooting pretty good. We'd, you know, start off swinging tennis balls at 20 yards back and forth across across the doorway or something, and you'd shoot it as the tennis ball was going by, and then, of course, that got too easy, so then we started doing lifesavers and stuff like that. But I got to shooting so much archery that people find this hard to believe but if you were a deer or a bear or a caribou or whatever you were and you were within a hundred yards you were done there was just no ifs ands or buts about it you were done I there was just no doubt in my mind you were just done it was, it was just, it's almost like I did I was shooting sights you know hunting bow and all that stuff but uh It was almost like it was instinctive, like I barely had to even aim. I could just hit whatever I wanted to hit. A lot of things are that way. You can uh, do them enough that you don't even have to think about it. You just do it and there it is flint napping is that way uh, to a certain extent do enough of it you only have to think about it anymore you just do it I've never been to the point in flint napping that I was in archery but uh got a few rough spots because of this stuff the imperfections that's in it but all in all it's not terrible all right let's draw some let's draw something on here
put some corner notches in it, I guess. These probably don't match up exactly, they don't, but not too far off. Give you something to go by. And we'll scrunch some corner notches in this thing. Okay, so that's how this is set up. You can see how thin that is at the tip. And it's rounded over at the end. And what I found so, and I'm still practicing this, but what I found so far is if I put my thumb on top, I can get more downward pressure. Pop my mark almost completely off there. Let's see, I gotta get you guys in a different position here so that I'm not off camera Well, I got kind of carried away right there. Fix this up again. And this particular notching coming from the top technique is new to me, so. Guys, just have to bear with me because I'm probably going to be doing a lot more of this notching 
and I expect to have some failures. I broke everything I touched notching down at Roberts. Um, I couldn't see the platforms, but I can see them right now with these glasses and this lighting. I can most definitely see them. So. Notching right into that junk. If you buy one of these off the website, they come with the welding rod that you need for doing this right here. That was tough. Ooh, I busted that, busted that ear off. I had the tool turned a little wrong. So we'll have to even these up and I told you guys I'd have some failures. Anytime you're learning a new technique, that's going to happen.
bring those to center. This side right here is still down just a bit. Got pop outs on both sides. It is a little crunchy on this side. Some limestoney stuff, whatever that is. not something I regularly find in this. But it's in this piece. Alright, I don't know if I have an eraser. I do have an eraser. Eraser pencil marks. Zoom you out a bit. And we're over an hour. But that's our point. I'm going to... Oh, a little nick came out of that side right there. Anyways, it's ready to strap to an atlatl point and kill a mastodon. Let's uh, put a little magic on it. A little collar good. I might shoot a by facing video today. If I don't do it today, I'll do it tomorrow. But, uh, And my hands are filthy. Still got a little pencil mark on there. Put that oil on there and don't look nearly as dry. But there's our point. She's a little crunchy right there. It's probably about six to one, something like that. But uh, there she is. Appreciate y'all watching, and uh, it's good to make one. Um, I've made a couple of them last. Well, yesterday I made a couple of them that were percussion, but I was struggling there for a while, and uh, but I got my eyes back, and uh, I'm ready to go. So appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Keep napping.